Hello, I'm Ariana Marshall from the Caribbean Sustainability Collective and uh, like many of us, we had a curiosity about the influx of sargassum seaweed. We've been seeing the pictures being posted on Facebook, we've, been, we've seen it ourselves, we've seen the masses of it and uh, we fundamentally have a curiosity of what the challenges and benefits are for this influx. So we started by going up to River Bay, St. Lucie, where we found a crew of a number of government agency reps from the National Conservation Commission, from the Ministry of Transportation and Works, and from Drainage and the Ministry of the Environment. And they were removing sargassum there. They said that they were there all day. It's quite a task. And we just spoke to them saying that we wanted to share with the general public what is being done because some people may think that nothing is being done. Uh, they did say that it is being taken to some nurseries for use as fertilizers and also being taken to the landfill. We followed up about that afterwards and we found out that there's really just one crew because of resources not having enough um, bulldozers and the other equipment they require to move and, and actually the power and time to do it but we did call the NCC and the person coordinating the cleanup said that he was getting a lot of calls but what they really need is people from the private sector to provide equipment to assist but also if you're from the private sector or organization and you want to meet them wherever they're doing their cleanup and get some truckloads of sargassum seaweed, you can do that. So we can share that information later with you. That was the National Conservation Commission that's coordinating the cleanup. They also told us we should go to Bath because that was one of their most challenging beaches where they cleaned it up one day and within two hours it was back to the state it was in before. There's so much sargassum that closer to the the beach area is actually decomposing is composting it doesn't smell the area where it's composting doesn't smell you could put your hand in it and it's warm like compost should be and it doesn't it's like a dark brown color so going to bath and seeing this mass these masses we also noticed that there were some signs of um, sea fans and sponges washed up on the beach. Also, the sand was really gray and shaly, almost like what would be on a volcanic island. So we were curious about that. We wonder about the state of the reef, if there's any reef mortality because of the sargassum, even though our reefs are already stressed. We had questions about the health impact of having so much sargassum openly compost although it could have the benefits of building back the beach, building back organisms which may have been destroyed from erosion, like creating little mini ecosystems. It has those benefits. But we wanted just what is the threshold? How much is too much sargassum? Because even when you have a compost at home, it's not completely open. So we wonder if there are any health impacts of that. Um, and then most of all, we wonder what opportunities there are for solving are just removing the sargassum if you find out that it is actually too much for this beach ecosystem to handle. Um, how can it be removed so that it doesn't destroy the beach with heavy equipment? Um, and how could it be used? They're being very, they're considering this as far as we know with the NCC, how they're removing the sargassum. But um, we are just thinking about what other uses it could have. We're hearing about people using it for fertilizer and in particular as a soil conditioner. So not necessarily for the chemicals in the sargassum, but for its physical structure uh, to improve the soil texture, to fill in spaces like holes, large holes in areas, um, as a physical barrier for some pests like snails after, of course, after you wash it out and it, so that it doesn't stink around you. Um, we had questions. We saw some articles about it being used as aquaculture in aquaculture in other parts of the world. One of the other directors for the collective is experimenting with using it 
with his aquaculture set up at home, tilapia, it could be fish feed. Curious about it being used as biomass source material. It could be used as, it could be fermented to make ethanol, which is also fuel. Um, and when you just look at on the market, the cost of seaweed products created from seaweed extracts is pretty high. So we're wondering if they're food uses, medicinal uses, product uses. And most of the people we've spoken to have been optimistic that it's something that Barbados needs and maybe it's something that we really need to look at closely. And it could be an opportunity rather than a disaster.